Okay, now for question number eight from the sample assessment paper for the Pure Mathematics 3 International A-Level. Um, here we have a, a controlled experiment, the number of microbes N present in a culture T, in a culture T days after the start of the experiment were counted. N and T are expected to satisfy a relationship of the form N equals A T to the power of B, where A and B are constants. Show that this relationship can be expressed in this form. Okay, log to the base 10 N equals M log to the base 10 T plus C. So this is actually one of the new topics in the syllabus. So we've got to use the laws of logarithms to transform, the, the, transform this into this form here. So obviously what's happened first is uh, you've taken the log to the base 10 of both sides. You don't actually have to write base 10, but as I have it written there, I'm going to write it as well. So it's the log to the base 10 of n is equal to log to the base 10 of a times t to the power of b. Okay, now I can use the laws of logarithms to split up this product here. There's a product here that can be split up. So I have log to the base 10 of n equals log to the base 10 of a plus log to the base 10 of t to the power of b. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now we can say log to the base 10 of n equals, I'll write this first, and I'll write this with the power, using the power law. So what I've done here, I've split this up using the laws of logarithms where I have the multiplication law. So if I have a product of two terms, I can split them up. If they're a product inside the logarithm, I can split them up as a sum of the separate logarithms. So log to the base 10 of a, plus log to the base 10 of t to the power of b. Now I'm going to write this in front of that because this is what's in that form here, the t part term is written first. And I'm going to use the power law. The power law, okay, so what I use for this law, just for recap, is log to the base of anything, for example, a of bc is equal to log to the base a of b plus log to the base a of c. That's the law that I used for this split this up. Now I'm going to use a power law which is log to the base a of b to the power of c is the same thing as c times log to the base a b. Okay so the power law states that you can multiply by the power okay and you end up they, they basically be the same thing. So I'm going to write this as b times log to the base 10 t plus log to the base 10 of a. Now to make it exactly like this, what we can say is let b equal m and let c equals log to the base 10 of a. Remember, a and b are constants. Okay, a and b are constants. Okay, so those are the two constants here. So therefore, we can say log to the base 10 n equals m times log to the base 10 of t plus C. So that's what we, we were required to show. Okay, so that's part A done. Now part B, I think it's all on the next page I put it because it's a graph. So part B, something to my pen, there we are. Okay, so for part B you have a graph given and you're told um, that figure 2 shows the, the line of best fit for the values of log to the base 10 of n plotted against the values of log to the base 10 t. Okay, so this is like your y-axis and this is like your x-axis. It's like y equals mx plus c. Okay, so it's a line of best fit, so they're drawn as a straight line. Okay, it says use the information provided to estimate the number of microbes present in the culture three days after the start of the experiment. Okay, so basically what we need to do here is we need to find the value of M, which is B, and C, which was log to the base 10 of A, which we wrote down over here. Those were our B and our C, okay? So we want to find, and we know that our original, um, the original uh, formula was N equals A T to the power of B. The original formula was the number of microbes is A times T to the power of B. So we can find the values of A and B 
Okay, we can then, uh, you know, work out what we need to work out for the number of microbes. If I can find out the value of A and B, all I have to do is put the value of A and B here, which are constants, and replace the T with three, and I find the number of microbes. So the, the, the task is for us to now find the value of A and B. Now, if I find the gradient of this graph, that will be M. Okay, that's the gradient of this graph. Okay, Y equals MX plus C. So this is that Y, this is your Y axis, that's your X axis down there. Okay, and your C is your Y intercept. So A, okay, A we can find by finding what C is. Okay, so we can say C, if we look at C, it's over here. That's going to be, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to make sure that we are accurate because they're giving us kind of like an accurate type of diagram. So I zoomed in a little bit. So 1.5, that's 2. So it looks like every two little squares is 1 unit. So 0.1 units, that's 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7, that's like 1 1.8, 1 1.9, and that's 2. So it looks like that's 1.8, 1 1.8. Okay, so that's the point 0 and 1.8. Okay, and this point, let me just draw a line across. Um, make it thin. I'll take the point right where it hits the end of the line. I'll work out what that is. Okay, so that's 4.5. That looks like it's 4.6. It's just about two squares. So let's say that's 4.6. Okay, and we're going to find the y coordinate. So the the that's the y coordinate four point six. Okay, what did I put five? Four point six. Four point six. Okay, that's the y coordinate of that point. We need to now know the x coordinate. So what I'll do is I'll draw a line down from the same point I got here, and I'll see where this hits the x-axis. So I've zoomed in a bit, so it looks uh, this should be fine if I pull this down a bit. One line, there we are. All right, so that goes through here, which is let's have a look. We got one point that's 1.2, that's 1.3. Okay, so 1.22, 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 8. Yes, 1.22. That point is 1.22. So let's write that as your x value here. That's 1.22. So the gradient of this curve okay is going to be given by the chain y which is 4.6 minus 1.8 over the change in x which is 1.22 minus 0 so that will be the gradient of this curve okay so let's get the calculator out and do this calculation so we have 4.6 minus 1.8 divided by 1.2 2, 2, minus 0, which gives us, I'll write it in the form, 140 over 61, okay, 140 over 61, which is equal to, if I write it like this, 2.295, I can say, 2.295, okay, so that's the gradient of the curve, and that's of the of the line sorry and that's the line set 1.8 okay so let's zoom out again to our normal view okay so now we found the gradient and we found the y intercept so we can say that um, b is equal to 2.295 or if you want to say in more exact form we can say 140 over 61 okay 140 over 61 and to find A, we can say that C, which is 1.8, C, 1.8 is equal to log to the base 10 A. So what we can say is, is that 10 is the base, 1.8 is the power, and A is the main number. So we can say A is the result, sorry. So we can say that uh, the base, which is 10, to the power of 1.8 is equal to A. So we can say A is equal to 10 to the power of 1.8. Okay, so a is equal to 10 to the power of 1.8. So 10 to the power of 1.8 will give us 63.095, 63.0957.
So 63.0957. So we know what A is and we know what B is. Uh, we can now answer the question that's asked, which is to use the information provided to estimate the number of microbes present in the culture three days after the start of the experiment. So we know that N equals A times T to the power of B. N equals A times T to the power of B. Now we know here that T is equal to three, because three days. And we know A is equal to what we found earlier, which is 10 to the power of 1.8. I'll leave it in that form. And we know what B is. And B was um, 2.295, which we wrote as 140 over 61. So we can find that what N is now after three days. So I say A, which is 10 to the power of 1.8, multiplied by T, which is 3 to the power of 140 over 61. And that should give us the number of bacteria. Okay, so we've got this already in our calculator, times 3 to the power of fraction 140 over 61 which gives us 785.294 which will round to three significant figures as it doesn't tell us anything else so we'll write it as 785 microbes okay that's the answer to part b now for part c it says with reference to the model which i've got down here um, interpret the value of the constant a so here we can see that in a, you know the n is the number of microbes and t is the number of um, microbes uh, sorry t is the number of days okay so n is the number of microbes after t days so what would a mean here well basically if you think about it when t is equal to one you'll have n equals a times one to the power of b now one to the power of anything is going to give you one so when t is equal to one n will equal a so you could say that a is the number of microbes present the number of microbes after one day after one day you don't need a much of elaboration there. there's only one mark answer but you can see that from this here that whatever if t is one then n will equal a, a. it will be the same as a okay so that's the answer to this question now this is a new type of question in the p3 papers you won't find them in the old c3 papers so this is something um all the c34 papers for that matter so it's something that you have to be aware of when you're revising okay that this type of question needs to be practiced and you can find these type of questions maybe from other examining boards i will try and make a few papers um eventually although i don't think i'll be able to for the january exam that's coming up in a few days but um we'll see you have to try to look up questions like this um to not forget that it's part of the new syllabus okay